Well, hello. How's that for an intro? Cue Vlogmas title sequence. <laughs> Good life. I'm a little bit informal today, and that's because it's book launch week and I'm tired. Mm -hmm. We're not doing like super like formalized Amy TVs this month, and so this might seem the same, but it's a little bit different just because. I'm on the floor, okay? <laughs> I'm on the floor. The floor has become an epic feature of Vlogmas this year. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's that time of year. Books are top of brain for us here at Amy TV. Of course, it's no secret that my book, Good Morning, Good Life, came out a couple days ago. Go get it if you don't already have it. But as we are approaching sort of the holiday season, not sort of actually, like literally we're in it. And if you haven't done your shopping yet, people start judging you and your family like, oh, I was done in October. Don't you love when people say that? I was done in... <laughs> You must not have very many friends and family then. You did not pick out my gift in October. But if you did, I'm very impressed. I'm very excited to open it. One of my favorite questions by one of my favorite thought leaders is a question from Tim Ferriss, and that is, what is the book that you've given the most as a gift? He asks it a lot in, like, actually, in his own books. He asks it in um, Tribe of Mentors. I think he asks that question. And also on his podcast, he asks that a lot. And so I'm always like, ooh, which one is it for me? Like, what would my answer be if I were answering that question? And so I thought this would be a fun opportunity for me to go over a few. I think there's not just one clear winner. There's like different ones for different people just depending on what's going on in their life. And if you're thinking about giving somebody a book for the holidays, maybe these would be some good options to think about. Why would you give a book as a gift? That's a good question. We don't have to assume that everyone is a reader in order to do this. We just want to do something that's a little bit better than presenting them with more clutter, right? You can always go get that random crap that they sell in the Target checkout and be like, oh, throw that in their stocking. But if you actually give somebody a book and you pick it out based on who they are and what's important to them, you're truly showing them that you listen to them, that you wish the best for them and all of their events and that they better themselves and um, you're offering a little bit of advice without actually giving advice. Isn't it funny how like we don't want unsolicited advice but if somebody gave us a book that was kind of aligned with what we're thinking it's sort of like the authors that neutral party that we're gonna let deliver the unsolicited advice for us. That's the ulterior motive here. So I'm gonna start with Oh, uh, actually, I'm gonna start with a new gift. This one I have gifted to my best friends this year. They've already gotten it, so this isn't a spoiler because I like to be the friend that's like, oh, I didn't know we weren't doing Christmas gifts today. I brought yours and it's like December 2nd. So I'm that friend. I'm not the friend that finished shopping in October. I'm the friend that's like, oh yeah, I already have your gift and it's right here, boom. Okay, so there was a book that I wanted, but it's by a UK based YouTuber and unfortunately only the paperback is available in the US and the Kindle of course But the hardcover is like this dreamy girly small coffee table book that I Needed to have in my life and in my friend's life and so I tweeted to my community I was like hey is there anybody in the UK that could buy this book for me and ship it to me I will pay for it you know just help me get it because it seemed like it was too hard for me to figure out how to do that myself online and so at scorn trooper my dear friend I just feel like I got so lucky because it seemed to be a pretty seamless process for her she picked up this book for me on the UK Amazon it is a book by Lily Pebbles who I enjoy on YouTube and it is called the F word this is a book about modern female friendship. It's definitely a summary of her experience in a lot of ways, but she touches on so many different types of friendships and how to avoid toxic people and what to do when you have toxic people in your life. But I also thought she offered a really good perspective about what it's like to make friends when you are also very present on social media as a job and how that can somehow be a difficult balance in conveying, you know, who you truly are as a friend 
friend and spending quality time with people while posting on social media, which is for more than just your immediate audience. It, it's sometimes a little bit different. I truly try to share what I would share with anybody anyway on my Instagram, but I don't want my friends to feel that there's blurred lines with like how I talk to them because we have a deeper relationship, of course. So I just thought this had a really nice touch on that. So this is a new most gifted book for me because honestly, I can't get my hands on it in the US until February, but I went behind the scenes to snag it for my two besties, Jesse and Sarah this year. So, and of course I kept a copy for myself because just look how darling that is as a hardcover on a coffee table where it's literally coffee on a table. And it's called the F word, which is just a conversation starter when you have people come over because it actually stands for female friendships. So if you struggle with friendship like I have in the past, then this might be a fun one for you. I really enjoyed it, definitely enjoyed the Audible as well. Okay, so another one that I like to give out, and this is somewhat self-congratulatory, <laughs> but also a great one if you know people who are trying to start a side business or want to start a business someday and they aren't 100% sure what to do, how to do it, or they allow themselves to have too many barriers to entry, I recommend Crushing It by Gary Vaynerchuk. Crush It, the original book from 2009, is awesome also especially if somebody's not a big reader it's very small hold on i'll show you oh 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 i know where you are i know where you are i know where you are because i just saw you right in the center look at how quick and easy of a read that is i mean it's just it's tiny it's just tiny so um yes very very good recommendation but this one's really fun i've gotten so much good feedback because i was featured I was featured by Gary in this book and I think that the testimonials of people who followed this advice and shared it here and Gary could kind of talk through what they did to be successful in some way was really helpful for people because you go from something that's super digestible, very motivating and a little bit of hyperbole to something that's like, oh no, that was actually really practical and here's how people did it. So I definitely recommend crushing it. Bright yellow book. You know, I'm into yellow books these days. <laughs> So definitely recommend this one. And if you're more into the audio, fun fact about Gary is like, he's not the best reader and he would tell you that. He doesn't like to read books, he just writes them and he has somebody help him write his books. But on the audio version, he just kind of riffs. So, oh, and also fun, I can't believe I almost forgot this. Also in the audiobook version, I read all of the female stories in the book. So any women who told their story in Crushing It, I read those. I believe it was Rich Roll who read the stories of the men. Because Gary's, you know, not gonna sit here and read word for word. So he, you know, he, I imagine that would have been hard for him to read other people's stories. Cause he just kind of riffs his own story. So it's like you get two different books. You get his book that he wrote and you get his book that he read. So that's kind of fun if you want to do both. But as a gift, really motivating for a future entrepreneur. Oldie but goodie kind of showed you a little sneak peek earlier. How to win friends and influence people by Dale Carnegie. I love my very like half priced books. I'm pretty sure that's where I got this. I got this from half price books. Very half priced books, old edition type of look. It's says the timeless bestseller probably because it's not the original version. <laughs> they probably came out with this really special gold one. I don't know how many people have this book that it looks like this. Just one of those fun things that happens when you go to a used bookstore. So anyway, love this one because I feel like this is the everyday type of advice on stoicism. If you don't know stoicism, I'll talk about that again in a minute, but that's more philosophical. You know, how do you go about your day and your life? And it's all about how you react rather than, well, it's all about how you kind of present yourself versus how you react. And can you react differently so that you're a healthier person and you have healthier relationships with other people? Stoicism really is, I think, about kind of keeping yourself at center and making the most of every moment, where I think this is practical advice for how you really have relationships with people that don't take you off of that path. I, I don't know how to explain it better than that, but I feel like this is like my original version of stoicism because I feel so much that stoicism has to do with your feelings about other people a lot of the time. The circumstances change, bad things happen, but we're mostly blaming other people for it or we're worried about our relationships with other people or we're feeling guilty about our relationships with other people. And that's where I feel like stoicism as advice is really helpful, but how to win friends and influence people is sort of a, a way to like get to basics on like, okay, maybe you're setting your expectations a little bit too high, both of yourself and of others. Here's how you actually interact with people in a way that is going to be beneficial to you both and is going to make you the best possible version of yourself to others. This is just a great 
book. I mean like, I've gifted this so many times, not because I was trying to drop some like really wretched hint, like how to win friends and influence people. But like, it's funny to think about how we use the word influence today. We usually think of influencer and I personally don't like being called that because I think that my job is so much bigger. But um, the word influence has just kind of gone through such an interesting journey that it's like, what does it really mean to influence somebody? Because it has to do with keeping them in mind, being in their shoes and truly understanding that. I think one of my favorite lines from this book and I wish I could find it, my God, I should have looked. Something that he teaches is, you know, if somebody's telling you about something, right, and you think they're ridiculous, and you think like, oh my gosh, like, I never would have done that, I never would have responded that way, I definitely wouldn't have thought that the way that they thought that. I think the line in here is something like, if I were in your shoes, I would have felt the same way. Because that those words are literally true. If you were in someone else's body in their shoes, you would have felt the same way because they're telling you exactly how they felt. So that's just one example of like, oh yeah, if you don't have something better to say and you genuinely have different feelings and you don't think it's worth taking them down that roller coaster because they're already on one. If I were in your shoes, I would have felt the same way. I mean, it's just stuff like that where you really reposition how important these unnecessary conversations or sharings of opinion or unsolicited advice situations happen. Or when we take things personal that have nothing to do with us whatsoever, they can just be avoided by looking at somebody and saying, oh wow, yeah, that's how they feel. You know what, if I were in their shoes, I'd probably feel that way too. Cause think of all the things that have happened on that path. That's just like really good advice. I think that everyone should get a copy of this book. It doesn't matter if you're trying to make more friends. It doesn't matter if you're in sales or in business and want to influence people to do a certain thing. I just think in general, this is really good advice for having great relationships. There should be like a teen version of this. <laughs> is there a go back to high school version of this? I don't want to go back to high school, but you know. All right, I love this one. I've talked about this book so many times, but I don't know how many times I've actually showed it in my hands. Love this book. Julia Cameron, The Artist's Way. If someone you know is feeling like they wish they were being more creative or they wish they were making more time for their passion or they can't come up with a way to take their ideas out of their head and get them out into the world, this is the book. This is where I learned about morning pages, which is stream of consciousness writing that I do every morning. And it sounds like you're supposed to be all like philosophical and like fun and interesting in your, no. All you're supposed to do is unleash the crap from your brain so that you can be more creative, be more productive, be more positive in the next moments of the day. So what I do is I grab my cup, I wash my face, grab my coffee, grab my lemon water, gotta drink the lemon water before the coffee. And then I sit down and I just journal for three pages because whatever's on my mind, anxiety, stress, grudges from the day before, whatever bad dream I just had, the fact that Vin almost elbowed me in the head while we were sleeping last night, I write it down and it's gone. It's on paper, it's out of my life. I tuck it into that drawer until I come back to it again tomorrow morning to do the same thing again. And now I can go and do much more positive things with my brain for the day, especially being creative. So I love this book. I think this is such a great way to read what it means to get creative because it's so it's so big in, its, in your thinking like, oh, how do I get more creative? I'm just not a creative person. I think as Chase Jarvis would say, everyone's a creative and it's just a matter of how you bring it to life. And I think uh, Julia Cameron's way of doing that is fantastic. Morning pages, basic tools. Yes, honey. Y'alls. This is a good one. Gift this one. I'm sure it comes in smaller forms. Maybe not. I, I, I bought this like 25th anniversary edition, so it's very grand as much as I think she is grand. And my last gift that I have gifted the most is a book that I've been reading now for almost a year. It will be a year on December 31st, and I talk about this book all the time, and I hinted to it earlier, and that is The Daily Stoic by Ryan Holiday. These are the philosophies of stoicism that I was telling you about earlier. The Stoics, things they've said, and Ryan's interpretation of those things explained to you. I've been reading this book every single morning since January 1st. I bought it at the end of the year last year upon recommendation. I make sure to underline and star and make notes on every page that I read because I want to know where my head was at on that day. My intention for myself is that I keep reading this book every single year. I think it's a really good practice to be in at the beginning at the beginning of every single day after morning pages. And I also like I used a, pe a black pen this year. I feel like I'm going to use like a highlighter next year to see if different things strike a chord with me or to make notes with a blue pen in a different way. Like I kind of just want to take this same book through different years of rotations and just see what else, what other epiphanies 
I can come to because it's funny like oh this is tomorrow's entry like there's no writing on it sometimes the stoic quote is useful <laughs> and sometimes I, I don't understand it whatsoever. So I need to read Ryan's interpretation of it and that helps me a lot. But I might find that after I've been a little bit more educated on how they talk and what my headspace is, that I might understand these quotes a little bit more in the future and I might like think about them a different way or I might have a different story to put with them. And so I'm also thinking, you know, what could be a journal prompt to go with this every day. I'm not trying to do too much writing because it'll start to feel like homework in the morning, but this is a great one. I mean, like you can't go wrong gifting this one. It's a page a day. It's a page a day. So even if somebody's not a big reader, they can start the day or they can take time out of their day at any point in time, sit down, read a page, less than a page. It's like mostly half a page all the time. And maybe take away something more positive. And I just think that that's the best gift you could ever give somebody. So there's that. Those are the books that I have gifted the most. And um, actually, if I'm being completely honest, there is another book that I have gifted the most. And that is this one. vlog like a boss because I wrote this one so of course I've given it out as a gift many times but I anticipate the next book I'll be giving out the most as a gift is Good Morning Good Life and if I can shamelessly plug myself for you to think about this as a gift for your loved ones I'm going to do that because it just came out on Tuesday and I have to tell the whole world it doesn't matter if somebody's a morning person or not in fact if they're not a morning person I have a page for them it's one of the first pages non-morning people read this first you do not have to be a morning person to make the most at the start of your day and you can feel much more like yourself and feel like you can own the day when you allow yourself to have that moment. And so I walk through the three guidelines of things you can do in the morning for a morning routine. You fill those buckets how you see fit for you. And then the entire book is about those five habits that are gonna help you master mornings and your whole day so you can go after the life that you want. And so that is my shameless plug and the gift I think would be also fabulous this holiday season. <laughs> oh jeez, such a ham. Okay, so a quick announcement on the Vlogmas front. We had the very best of intentions with this challenge this month, and we still do, but I would like to take a beat. I actually have a very enormous personal development happening at the moment. No. I'm not pregnant. I need to focus on that. And I also have some videos that are coming this month that I need to do a little bit more planning on. Now that the book is out, I feel like I have some more space to do that. And my editor, shout out to Rebecca, you've been crushing Vlogmas so far. And I would like to give you a short break because I know that you also have a life. So <laughs> we're gonna take two days off of Vlogmas. So today is Thursday, today is the 12th. So we made it through 12 days of Christmas, right? 12 days of Vlogmas. If we wanted to end it now, that might be socially acceptable, but we won't because we have more plans for you. We're gonna take off Friday and Saturday. I have my book launch party tomorrow. I can't wait to share that video with you. So we need to be planning that party. And we also have family coming in town and also personal development and also need a little bit of, of planning time. So we're gonna take two days off of Vlogmas. We'll be back on Sunday with a special trip that I took recently that I want to share with you. I'm very excited about that. A little bit of sunshine coming your way. Then we will proceed with Vlogmas. So thank you for being understanding of that. Thank you so much for supporting so much this week. This has been a major week, both for me in launching a book and also my team for them really seeing what it's like to work in the media world. And so I think you providing feedback and help and thoughts and buying the book has helped them to see more of that. And so that's like really fun for me because it makes the culture of the business even more interesting and exciting. And send good vibes to Vin because he's literally laid up in bed right now with no voice but also send me your prayers that I don't get it. Please don't let me get it. I will leave links to all these books, including my own. The audible version of my book is coming soon. I'll keep you posted. It's not there yet, but the book, and I still at home, I don't have a copy of the planner. The book and the planner, oops, end of file. Links will be on Amazon, and I will see you on Sunday. I will see you on Sunday for Vlogmas Day. What? Today's the 12th? 15? <laughs> I will see you on Sunday for Vlogmas Day 15. That felt like an ending, but that's not my ending. <laughs> that's all for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate it as always. Make sure you subscribe for good vibes. Kiss the ones you love and go after the life that you want. Cheers. 
Hey, are you struggling to find time for the things you love? Feel like you're constantly on the go, but taking care of everyone else first? You are not alone, and you deserve so much more. Not only are you capable of taking on this challenge, you already have all the tools it takes to make it happen. That resourcefulness is all you need to get activated by your new daily mantra. Good morning, good life. It's my new book, and it launches on Amazon on December 10th. More details at goodmorninggoodlife.com. P.S. I'm literally trying to stay in my zone here alone because everyone's sick. A couple of my staff are sick. My husband is sick. He woke up this morning and he doesn't have a voice, so you know, that's not concerning. I don't wanna get sick. I just have zero interest, none whatsoever.